During the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, CNN reported that Russian forces were moving thermobaric weapons into Ukraine. On February 28, 2022, Ukraine's ambassador to the United States accused Russia of deploying a thermobaric bomb. Not long after that, Russia has already confirmed the use of these weapons in Ukraine as the Ministry of Defense in London has claimed this. This vacuum boom is regarded as one of the most devastating armaments in Russia's military arsenal and is capable of causing significant civilian casualties. Thermobaric weapons are not illegal, but their use is strictly regulated. Anyway, what are actually the thermobaric weapons? How do they work and what role might they play in the war? Hello everyone, you are watching another episode of Military TV. In today's session we will discuss this topic further. If you are curious on the answer, stay tuned only at this channel. A thermobaric weapon, also called an aerosol bomb, a vacuum bomb, or a fuel air explosive, refers to a type of explosive that uses oxygen from the surrounding air to generate a high temperature explosion. The fuel air explosive is one of the best known types of thermobaric weapons. This weapon sucks in oxygen from the surrounding air to generate a high temperature explosion. It is capable of producing a blast wave of a significantly longer duration than that of a conventional explosion and is capable of pressuring human bodies and crushing internal organs. The weapon was developed by the US and the Soviet Union during the 1960s when both countries were involved in the Cold War. They are typically deployed to clear large swathes of ground and not generally used for precision strikes. We might question how do they actually work? The thermobaric weapon known as fuel air explosive is a two-stage munition. The first stage charge distributes an aerosol made up of very fine material from a carbon-based fuel to tiny metal particles. A second charge ignites that cloud, resulting a fireball, a massive shock wave, and a vacuum as it absorbs all of the oxygen in the area. The explosion wave is capable of vaporizing human bodies and can endure far longer than a conventional bomb. It can be seen in this diagram. The precision-guided bomb hits its target first. Then a minor explosion produces a cloud of explosive material, which is subsequently ignited by a second explosion, resulting in a tremendous explosion capable of pressurizing human bodies. This bomb can be dropped as a bomb from an airplane or launched as a rocket. When the initial explosive charge hits its target, it explodes, bursting and opening the container and releasing the fuel mixture as a cloud. The cloud is then exploded with a second charge, resulting in a large flame, a massive blast wave, and a vacuum that absorbs all surrounding oxygen. The weapon can destroy reinforced buildings, equipment, or even injured people. These bombs have been deployed for a variety of purposes and developed in a range of sizes, including weapons for use by individual soldiers, such as handheld rocket launchers and grenades. Huge air-launched versions have also been designed, with the purpose to kill defenders in caves and tunnel complexes. It is known that the effects of these bombs are at their most severe in enclosed spaces. In 2003, the U.S. had a trial on a 9,800 kg bomb with the nicknamed the mother of all bombs. Four years later, Russia developed a similar device dubbed as the father of all bombs. The explosions created is equivalent to a 4 to 4 tons conventional bomb and making it the biggest non-nuclear explosive device in the entire world. Having such a devastating impact and the usefulness against defenders who are hidden into buildings or bunkers, thermobaric bombs have primarily been employed in typical of urban environments. This is relevant to what has been given to the current situation in the ground of Ukraine, where Russian forces are attempting to take control of the capital, Kyiv, and other main cities in the east of the country. In addition, Russian and other Western forces have also used these bombs in various attempts. Thermobaric munitions can be traced back to World War II, when they were initially utilized by the German army. They were not widely developed until the 1960s, when the U.S. used them in Vietnam. They were also used by U.S. during the war in Afghanistan. The first used was in 2001 to try to destroy Al-Qaeda forces hiding in the caves of the Tora Bora Mountains, followed by in 2017 on the fight against Islamic State forces.
On the other hand, Russia employed these aerosol bomb in its war in Chechnya in 1999 and was highly condemned by Human Rights Watch for employing such a deadly weapon. What are actually the rules of using this thermobaric explosion in the war? The international law does not prohibit the use of thermobaric munitions, fuel air explosive devices, or vacuum bombs against military targets. However, their use against civilian populations may be banned by the United Nations Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. Also, as of February 2022, all past attempts to regulate or restrict thermobaric weapons have unsuccessful. Moreover, according to the BBC News, there is no clear international regulation specifically prohibiting their usage. Nevertheless, if a country uses them to target civilian in the populated areas, such as in public places like schools or hospitals, then it could be convicted of a war crime, as stated under the Hague Conventions of 1899 and 1907. In addition, the Amnesty International also confirmed that international humanitarian law prohibits the use of inherently indiscriminate weapons such as cluster munitions or vacuum bombs. It is clearly declared that launching indiscriminate attacks killing or injured civilians constitutes a war crime. Anyways, if you find this video is interesting, don't forget to like, share, and comment, and the most important one is to hit the subscribe button for more updates on awesome videos. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.